Now, Shabbat Shalom, Sen Bet Salam. How important, how important was the sale of Esau's birthright? You know, we've, you probably might have heard, hopefully you've heard something either pre preached or taught on this or have developed your own ideas about how important was the sale. What can we learn from Esau or Esau selling his birthright and the sale of his birthright? Well, let's go into this because this is the, the Rastafari Sabbatical Studies number six to lit or told dot in the Hebrew till lit till the dim and the generation. This is concerning the generations. Now generation goes before regeneration. Now that should be that should be fairly obvious, but oftentimes it's those things that are obvious that appear or seem to be hidden from us. So this right here till lit equals the generation. Now, some make it plural and see it as being plural. So the, I'll put a little S in parentheses here, the generation, or to imply even the generations if you are dealing with the literal descendants. But as a collective, it's one generation. And we're talking about the generation of our father Abraham, the generation of father Abraham. Now, the sale of the birthright. What is the birthright? What, what is, you know, what is the birthright and what does the birthright mean? Well, first of all, let's deal with Bamarinya. Let's go to the heart of it, right, to, to, to begin. Bamarinya, the birthright is called, when it's uh, first mentioned in this particular bait or this, this paragraph, this paragraphical here from verse 25, from chapter 25, verse 27 to verse 34. Uh, Genesis or Orit Zesitaret, the Torah, the Ethiopic Torah of the creation of the Torah, simply Torah, but in the context for us, the Orit, the Ethiopic Torah, Zesitaret of the creation, Mi'raf Haya Amis, chapter 25, or Mi'raf, the rest, between the chapter is a, is a rest point. The, the, the chapter Mi'raf itself means a rest. Now, this particular chapter, verse 27 to verse 34, we're at the point where we get a character description of Esau and Jacob, the difference between Esau and Jacob. What kind of man was Esau? What kind of man was, was, was Jacob? What he did, how he lived. Um, and then now we get this interesting um, point of the, the birthright, being sold in verse um, in verse uh, uh, 31. There's this short verse right here where it says, And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Verse 31, Salasa An, Ya'ik O Bim, Bemajamaria, Bekurna Hina Shitaling. Allo. Now, what's interesting is that in King James, you see the distinction? In King James, literally this says, Bermejameria, in beginning or beginning by beginning, to start with. It's like almost saying, to start with, right? To start with your birthright, I mean, your, your birthright, your birthright, sell to me, the Kurunai Hen Shitaling, right? And it's interesting because we find, again, in verse 33, according to the English, and Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore to him, and he sold his birthright to Yaakov. But the distinction now in the King of Kings, Metaf Kedus, in the pure language uh, Bible of His Majesty, it says in this verse uh, 33, Salasa source, it says, Yaakov Bim and Jacob. Iski, Bemajamaria, Malaling. Iski, Bemajamaria, Malaling. Malaling. Again, he says, Bemajamaria. He says, to start with, or literally by way of starting. By way of starting. 
first sell to me. Then he says, by way of, he says, okay, by way of starting, you understand, swear to me. Make a solemn promise to me. So he's saying to start with. So that, that, that point about a day or, or where it says day should, should be circled and just a note about that so it can be meditated and, and analyzed and scrutinized in the context. And the context that we understand it is he's saying to start with in the sense of It's key. You understand? Okay, to start with. All right, to start with, you know, by starting or by way of starting. So now the birthright, the birthright is is um, is known be que be que re na. Now to add the the fullness of the word. But here's the key part of the word right here. This will be b. This will be b. This will be a q w a q w e sound. A q w a schwa a schwa. You know what I'm saying? B que. This right here would be a, a r sound. And then the last part of it, this letter right here, nahas. You know what I'm saying? Is the na sound. Now this is the extended part, which is now the the um, the 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 possessive, you know, you could say the possessive you male, he, you understand? Or actually, it's a schwa again, and the ne here is also a schwa, a schwa. So this is really hin, he e he e ne e, hin, the korana hin, and this equals the birthright. The right of birth. You understand? The right of birth. Literally saying your male birthright. You understand? This is this is what's the focus of this aspect. So we're gonna hope to speak right now on the Bikurana, the Bikurana, the Kurana, and in particular with Asal Bikurana Hen. Sell to me thy birthright. So this is very interesting. It's a very important point of scripture because we have also there's a prophetic um word I think in the New Testament where it talks about um concerning Esau or Esau and that birthright. I think it's around Hebrews Hebrews twelve. Let's just rightly divide the word of truth and let's go to Hebrews twelve so we can get a a, a full picture like a 1080, you understand, a 1080, a trifold picture of um, Esau and this particular birthright. So it's uh, chapter 12, verses uh, 16 and 17. And there's a subscription here in the Schofield that says, Esau or Esau, a warning to professors, lest they miss the priesthood is a warning to those who profess, not just to college professors or teachers, but to those who profess, you understand, who profess to be in Christ or, or of God in that sense, or even in covenant. It says right here, least there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat, one morsel of meat, not, not flesh, but one morsel of something to eat, sold his birthright, his right of birth. For, verse 17, ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the barakat, see, he sold it before the time of inheritance. So saying that after he sold it, when the time came when he would have inherited the barakat or the blessing, he was rejected because you can't get, you need to have the birthright to get the blessing. But you sold it already for something to eat. And this is kind of a, a figure on this, what's happening in this latter day and time, people selling their soul. You understand? Even selling their consciousness, you understand, for something to eat. 
to go along with the ways of the world or in particular with the system of things, the worldly system of things or the Gentile system of things or Babylon where they are doing the very same thing. They have a birthright, but they sell that birthright for something to eat. He was rejected, for he found no place of repentance. Isn't this interesting? He didn't find any place where he can re repent, no place, not just a, a place to go, like Ethiopia or Africa or something like that, but he found no, no place within God's, within God's covenant and within the whole covenant with his father and the whole birthright where he could go and, and turn around and make a change. He couldn't make a change. He couldn't repent. He couldn't undo, in a sense, what was done, though he sought it carefully. It says that he sought it. He looked for it, not just casually, oh, I just looked around, I don't see it around, okay. No, he sought it carefully. He sought it diligently. He really thought on this in time to come very much, and he could not find it, though he sought it carefully with tears. He sought it carefully, even to the point of, you could say, an emotional breakdown with tears. How could he... How could he regain that birthright? And this is a figure on those who, in this latter day and time, sell their souls or, or seek to live in the image of the beast, but more particularly in selling their soul, going to the point that they sell their feeling, their thought, their emotion, their, their, their very consciousness. It's like when it says that their conscience is like being seared, like with a hot iron. They, they become burnt out to Jah. They become burnt out to God. They become burnt out to truth, to righteousness, to, to good doing. They, they're sold on the evil doers, evil lie, this end time deception. You understand? They get sold on that. So they, they sell their birthright. So Esau, he stands for a mere man of earth. He, he's that earthly type. You know, we talk, talk about Esau and Jacob, the two types. There's the earthly type and then we have the spiritual type, which Yaiko represents, even as a seed of the real spiritual type, which is the Israel, that new name of Jacob, that new name, um, because he, he wrestled for that particular blessing. Now, in many respects, a nobler man. In some respects, you can say that Esau was somewhat nobler, you understand, naturally, than Yaiko. Yaiko, he was destitute of faith, though he was noble in some sense, especially according to the age, because you have to remember in those age to be a, a hunter in that sense, when we understand what dispensation it was, that to be a hunter and, and to be a, 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 a man of the Beraha, a man that could go out into the wilderness and face all of, like, like he faced the world, he faced the system of things then. So on those levels, he was actually nobler than, than Ya'iko, because Ya'iko was like a homebody. He, he was at home cooking. I mean, what? He was cooking. What was he cooking? He was cooking lentils and probably baking bread. He was, he was an idolist, you know, in the Rastafari sense. We can over his, a lot of his nature, because for true Rastafari to Yukayud, you know, is a level of a, a refinement and accomplishment to be able to, to, to cook your own food. You understand? And another height of that is to bake your own bread. You, you're over for Rastafari. And those Rastafari in that sense, Jacob becomes a foreshadowing of Rastafari, of, of kind of the spirit and the character of Rastafari, both with the old name, Ya'iko, you understand that birth name, and then with the new name as Israel, because some interpret, and rightly even Gerald Macy, when he's properly understood, you understand, many don't, the Zeitgeist people and the rest of them don't properly understand Gerald Macy, and there's caused shame on Gerald Macy by distorting, you understand, his, his teaching for their, uh, their pseudo-illuminous, you understand, um, spiritual wickedness agenda. But be that as it may, you know, the truth will redeem the righteous. But Esau was in many ways, in many respects, many aspects of his personality, a nobler man naturally, from the natural perspective, the worldly perspective, than Ya'iko. 
but he was destitute of faith. He, you know, he lacked what he really didn't have. He didn't have any imnet. He didn't have any subjective faith. And objectively speaking, he was blind to the amen. You understand? He was blind to that manifestation of, we can say, God or even Christ. In that day and time, the spirit of Christ, or the spirit that leadeth to Christ, he was destitute of the amen. He was destitute of, of a faithful and a true witness. You understand? The beginning of the creation, beginning by starting. Interesting that Jacob uses those words. And on top of that, you understand? He would go from bad to worse. Esau, he despised the birthright, the bukurna. He despised the birthright. Because it was a spiritual thing. He's like, well, I don't got time for reading the Bible and all that. Yeah, I'm out there. I'm out there about it. I'm about it, you know, so forth and so on, right? He, he despised the spirit. Because spiritual thing, what you mean? You know, I'm peace and love and all this. Oh, I, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not down staying at home and, 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 and doing a hey, what? But when I'm hungry, I, I, I want to eat. But I'm out there doing the real work. You're not really doing nothing. It's, in a sense, you almost see uh, it's a little husband and wifeish. You get a little spirit and the aspect of that. You understand right there as well. But he despised his birthright because it was a spiritual thing, of value only. See, the spiritual things are only of value as there was faith, as there was imminent. A spiritual things of no value if you don't got imminent, if you don't have any subjective faith to apprehend it, to apprehend it. You know, it's almost like, to use a metaphor, it's like, suppose you have cash in there, but you can't withdraw because you don't have a credit card or you have a card, but you don't have the right PIN number. You know, somebody change your PIN number, you don't have the right PIN number. Yeah, of course you said today you'll call somebody up and identify yourself, but to use the kind of aspect like you have a wealth there. You understand? But you can't access it. He didn't have access. He didn't have the... Because what he lacked was not a worldly or a natural thing, but what he lacked was a spiritual thing. So there's a very important lesson and teaching here for all of I and I in this. So now the birthright, we get to learn further, it has three elements. Once again, that number, three. It has three elements. You understand the Judaic Trinity has three elements. The Bukurana has three elements. One, it is until the establishment, right, of the Aaronic priesthood, the head of the family exercised priestly rights. So before the Aaronic or Aaron's, the Levitical priesthood was established, it was the Ras of the Beit HaSed, it was the head or the Ras of the family that exercised priestly rights. They didn't run around and go to no so-called priest or whatever, unless they were into some, some other culture or occult, you know what I'm saying, some other culture except the true, the true faith. But the head of the family, he's the one who exercised priestly rights, firstly. Secondly, the Abrahamic family held the Edenic promise of the Satan bruiser. The Satan bruiser is the one who will bruise Satan. You understand? Know who will bruise Satan? Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. So we find that from Abel to Satan to Shet to Shem to Abraham to Yisahak. You understand? Know and it would have been Esau. It would have been Esau. This is all part of the birthright. You understand? Know Those who have the birthright also have the right and responsibility to bruise Satan's head. You understand? Know and even Satan knows this and was able to obviously fool Esau. Esau got, got hoodwinked and bamboozled. Now, thirdly, Esau as the firstborn, as the firstborn, you understand? He was in direct, he was, he, he was in the direct line of the Abrahamic promise of the earth blesser. Because he was the firstborn, not just being the Satan bruiser, but also the earth blesser, the one who will bless the land. Now, if you look at even Africa, look at Africa and certain parts of the world where famine, where the earth is under a curse, 
You see, we're, we're beginning to, we're going to see this global famine. There's going to be a global famine because there is a global curse, you understand, to the earth. The earth has not been blessed by the true earth blesses. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Now, for all that was revealed, for all the revelation that was revealed in Esau might have fulfilled those two great messianic promises. For all that was revealed, Esau could have fulfilled those two messianic prophecies and promises, those two promises there, you understand? Namely, the Satan bruiser and the earth blesser, you understand? Which, in a sense, if you over it, that's Georgis. Georgis in the sense of the, the Gio, Gaia, Gio, that's the earth, you understand? Georgis, worker, the earth worker. But the earth worker, Caduce Georgis, is also the Satan bruiser. The Satan bruiser, but, but in other words, you, the, the, the two are simultaneous. The two happen either simultaneously or concurrently. The two happen. Satan bruising, Satan bruising, Satan's head. You understand? As well as blessing the earth. Because in order to bless the earth, you've got to bruise Satan's head. You have to wound and that's, bruise that old dragon. This birthright, Esau sold. This birthright, Esau sold. This is one of the careless Ethiopians and even us as the lost sheep in this present dispensation. Many have sold for a momentary fleshy gratis gratification they sold this not for a long lasting even a fleshy gratification but for a momentary a transitory fleshy gratification you understand Yaakov's conception of the birthright at that time was doubtless carnal in the sense from a fleshical carnal perspective and also inadequate at that particular time. But here's what's the key. It was his desire. See, he had sakad, he had a will. You understand? It was his desire or to say his will, his fakad for it. That is what was the evidence. You understand? That was what was the evidence of his true faith and by comparison with his brother Esau of Yaakov's um, truer, truer faith by comparison to his firstborn brother Esau. So this is very, very significant. We have to understand and understand these three elements. First is the, 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 the priestical right, and then when the kingship was established, it's in that line, the kingly rights as well as the prophetical rights, you understand, being that head of the family or that ras of the Beit Yosef, being that head of the family to, to exercise those priestical rights, as well as being the Satan bruiser, the one who would bruise the old dutty dragon, as well as the earth blesser who would bless the earth, you understand? And bless the earth with what? Bless the earth to be a place of, we could say, food and, and green and animals and vegetation, a paradise, a, a garden, a, a restored and renewed place. It's almost like when we look at Ethiopia, you understand? We can see that Ethiopia was under that, 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 that priestly harass of the family, it was under the Satan bruiser, you understand, the one who bruised Satan's head, and it received that earthly blessing in the time, even of the time of Hala Selassie I, the last king of kings of Ethiopia. But then something happened because there was a careless generation, and they did in the same, in the same way or according to the same pr the principle of the thing. They did like Esau did that they sold their bukurna, you understand? To be, you, we can say, to turn their back on Ethiopia, you understand? And the ancient culture and the ancientcy, that was the birthright. You see, that, that was the birthright right there, but they turned their back. The careless, the careless Ethiopians, you understand, at home and abroad, they turned their back on that. So we can learn much from this example 
of Esau and Yaakov. And every time and every year and cycle that we go over this and we try to maintain that discipline, we recall some things that we already know, but there's other aspects of it. You understand? Even according to the time or dispensation that we are in when we study this, that we learn as well. And this is what's significant. This is what shows us that the word, though it's, it's dead letters right here on the paper, but in the living spirit and truth, you understand, this becomes spirit and life. And, 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 and we see that it's a living word. You know, it's, it's, it's a living word. Those who think it's a dead word, well, they are just looking at it like Esau would have looked at this spiritual thing and this particular spiritual matter. And the, the closing aspect of this that we'd like to just sum up on is the desire. Even though Jacob's conception of the Bukurna at that time was no doubt, you understand, carnal and was inadequate, you understand, in the fullness of what it was. It's like when we look at Rastafari, the Rastafari revelation, and from the beginning time to now, that though some of the elders and the first of them, their conception of the birthright in Rastafari, it still may have been somewhat carnal. It still have may, may have been inadequate, but the desire for it, the fakad, the willingness to make our wills obedient to good influences, for it, that is what evidence, and the, and the key word right there is evidence. Why is the key word evidence? Because Hebrews chapter 11, it teaches us that the superiority, you understand, the true even black supremacy, if we interpret rightly, black in, in its good sense, in its perfect sense, in its godly sense, then black supremacy or the superiority is a faith way. Now, faith is the substance of things what? Hope for. Faith is the substance. It's the substance of, th of that which you expect. If you're to get that which you expect in spirit and in truth, one needs to have subjective faith as a substance in the innermost of their inner sense. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The what? The evidence. It's evidence. Mas, mas reja, mareja, mas reja. It's evidence. It's, it's real evidence in the one that has it, you understand, and in the fruit and the manifestation also bears witness. But faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, the evidence of things not seen. Because what we speak on now as we look forward to the promises and the blessing, ones will say in the position that I and I is in right now that we don't see these things. Why to have faith in this? So the infidel or the kahadiwoch, the deniers of the king of kings and his Christ, they can't receive this. Because like Esau, like Esau, they don't have that which in them to receive it because it's spiritual. If it was something worldly or temporal, you know. And what's so interesting is that those who, who falsely um, judge and prejudice our Godfather, the king of kings, Kedemawi Hala Selassie, they also come from that ignorance, not knowing, that um, ignorance, error, you understand, they're in error. They have many things off, illogical, you understand, and some even that envy, you understand, that envy. And when we look at Esau, did he possess ignorance? Yes. You understand, he was, he was not knowing. He, he, was, he was like, what can the birthright do, you know, do for me? You know, I'm hungry. You know, did he make an error? Yes, he made an error. Even Yeshua says, don't swear, swear not. And then thirdly, you understand, and then on the third aspect, even on that particular time, swearing and taking oaths, that was, a, you know, a different matter for, one could say, a different day and age, you understand. But the third matter was that envy. It's clear that there was that envy. Some would misinterpret and say, no, uh, Jacob was envious of his brother. Why would he? Because they're still looking at it from a worldly, a so-called ignorant nowadays way. And if you look at the story in its right context, you will understand what this teaching and what we've been teaching on that is based on much of the notes in the Schofield Study Bible here. Because it says, for by it the elders obtain a good report. 
through faith we understand or understand that the world or the universe were framed by the word of God, the logic of God, the word and all created things is based on the word of Ha Elohim, Baruchu. So that the things which are seen, all that we see, were not made of things which do appear. And those the things that we see are not really made and now they've discovered atoms, you understand? And then they so called discovered you understand, or rediscovered um, quantum. Now they're talking about some string theory and stuff like that. You know, I can't wait till they understand that it's really, all of that is, is the word of God. All, and, and, there's, and there is a science to it, but it's a part of a mystery because they deny that which they should have already received. How can they receive that which they deny? So it gives instances of faith throughout this chapter Hebrews chapter 11. It speaks of Abel, Hanok, the Ethiopic Enoch, Noah, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Yaakov. And don't, don't you see what's going on right here? Joseph, Moses and his parents, Joshua and Israel, Rahab and, and many of the, the heroes of the Herus, those who were the Heruis, the, the chosen one, the Heruyan, the chosen ones of faith, the Old Testament Shemsu um, Herui. But if you look at the order of it, it's actually going through the Torah. The, it's actually going through the Torah, beginning off with Abel, then going to, to Enoch, and then to Noah, then to Abraham and Sarah, then going to Isaac, Yitzhak, and, and Yaakov, then going to Joseph, then and we get to, to, after Joseph, we're going into Exodus, Moses and his parents. So we can see even from this order that even the Torah portion reading and feedings were observed, you understand, even from Old Testament time, even into the early church time, you know, because some would say, why study the Torah? That's Old Testament. I'm not in the Old Testament. I'm in the New Testament. When Christ spoke about the scriptures, you understand? He wasn't speaking about Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John in that context. That's not saying that we're not to read and study and, and, and build on that rock, but he was speaking of the Old Testament. Now we have the testimony of Christos, of our black Lord and Savior, through the power of the King of Kings and his Christ to, to illuminate us and to guide us so that when we read the Old Testament, we are not like the so-called Jews, according to Kibra Neges, and according to even Hawari Apalos, who have a veil over their eyes in the reading of the Old Testament. There's some things they do see, you understand? But the fullness of Ras Tefari, you understand? Many of them have yet to see. So my brothers and sisters, uh, we hope and pray that you've learned something from this um, birthright, this, this birthright portion of the six uh, sabbatical reading and feeding Torah portion, Arasafari uh, Sabbath um, studies and sabbatical scrolls. And we hope and pray, you understand, to um, go into the, the next portions of this reading and feeding. But during this present time, this Shabbat time, we will say Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. One love, my brothers and sisters. Ene Arasiadinos Teferi Name. Salam. Tena Yesterling.